Welcome to question 2 of the 2019 Mathematical Methods Exam 1 for the Southern Hemisphere. In this video we will be looking at the solution and examination advice for this question. A reminder that this video is in no way endorsed by VCAR. For part A of question 2 we have let f be the function with a domain of the real numbers excluding one third, where its rule for f of x is 1 divided by 3x subtract 1. And we are asked to find the rule of f inverse. So we don't need to quote the domain, that will come later. We just need the rule of it. So when finding the rule of the inverse, there's a few steps that I like to follow. And the first step is just to let y equal f of x, so that we just have x and y in our rule. So therefore, for this question, we're just going to have y is equal to 1 divided by 3x subtract 1. The second step that we need to perform is we need to swap x and y to find the inverse. So therefore, instead of having y equals, it will become x equals 1 divided by, and instead of 3x subtract 1, it will now be 3y subtract 1. Our third step is to solve for y. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply by the 3y subtract 1 that's in the denominator of that fraction, just so everything is on one line. So after doing that, we'll have x multiplied by 3y subtract 1 in a bracket, and those brackets are important. And all that's going to be left on the right-hand side is the top line of that fraction, which is 1. The next thing we can do is we can divide by the x. So therefore, we'd just be left with 3y minus 1 on the left-hand side is equal to 1 divided by x. So the next thing we need to do to solve for y, I'll just do up here on the right hand side, is we're going to add 1 to both sides. So that will leave us with 3y is equal to, and it's going to be 1 on x plus 1 now. And the next step to get y by itself is to divide by 3, which I like to think about as multiplying by 1 third. And just a reminder that you'll have to multiply all of that by 1 third. And the same thing will need to happen on the left hand side, we'll multiply by a third. So therefore, we'll just get y equals finally. And then multiplying 1 on x by 1 on 3 will give 1 on 3x. And likewise, when we multiply 1 by 1 third, we'll just get plus 1 third. So we're almost there, except we don't like to quote an inverse as y equals. We need to use the correct notation. So this is our fourth step, is just to use correct notation. So therefore, f inverse of x rather than y equals is equal to 1 divided by 3x plus 1 third. So that is the answer to that part of the question. For part b, this is where we're asked to state the domain of the inverse. So here we can remember that the domain of the inverse is going to equal the range of the original function. And this is a hyperbola, technically with a plus 0 out to the right hand side, which tells us that the horizontal asymptote is at y equals 0. So it has a range of all real numbers excluding zero. So that becomes the domain of our inverse. So that means we can quote our inverse domain as being x is an element of round bracket negative infinity to zero with a round bracket, union with zero to infinity. So that is going to be the answer to part B of this question. And just before I move off this slide, some of you may be saying that it's easier just to write x is an element of all real numbers excluding zero. And you'd be absolutely correct that that is an alternate way that you could write the domain of the inverse function. From the examiner's report, we can see that 57% of students got full marks for this question, with 37% of students making a good start. So the examiner goes on to say that this question was well attempted and generally well done. However, in some cases, progression to the correct answer was hindered by errors with algebraic manipulation. So in particular, the transposing of an equation to get that y equals. And also poor use of notation was noted as being another thing that stopped students from getting full marks. And what we can take away from that statement is that it really needed to be f inverse of x equaling the rule as the final answer rather than just y equals. For part b of the question, 64% of students got full marks for that. And the examiner noted that in general, students knew that the domain of the inverse was equal to the range of the original function. 
For part C of this question, we let G be the function obtained by applying the transformation T, which is shown in the matrix form below, to the function F. And T is simply the matrix transformation where we take X and Y and we add the matrix CD onto it. And from the transformation T, we can see that essentially what's happening is a translation of the graph. And we are asked to find values C and D that mean G, the graph that's obtained by applying this transformation, is equal to the inverse of what we just found on the previous slide. So I think it's going to be helpful to have all our rules written out. So f of x, which is the graph we're going to transform, had a rule 1 divided by 3x subtract 1. And g of x, we found to have a rule 1 divided by 3x plus 1 third. So we need to now work out what translations occur to take f of x to g of x. And some of you may be able to see immediately that we'll need to translate this graph one on three units in the negative x direction and one on three units in the positive y direction. But for those that can't tell that from the rule, I'm just going to sketch the two graphs quickly. So on the left hand side of the two sets of axes that I've drawn, I'm going to sketch f of x. And when the denominator equals zero, we can see that x equals one third would give that so that means that our asymptote for this graph is at x equals 1 on 3. As we discussed on the previous slide, there's technically a plus 0 here. So that means that our horizontal asymptote is at y equals 0. And then there's no reflections or anything that's taken place. So we know that the hyperbola would have part of its graph here and the other part of its graph just down here. So that is y equals f of x the graph that we're going to transform. On the second set of axes, I'm going to sketch the inverse graph. So it has an asymptote at x equals zero because we can see one divided by three x. When x is zero, we'd be trying to divide by zero, which isn't possible. So that's where our asymptote occurs. So this is x equals zero. And the plus one third that's just here means the horizontal asymptote is now at y equals one third. So that has a rule y equals one divided by three. Again, there's no reflections that are taking place. So all we've got is a graph that's now in this position and a graph that's also down here. So now hopefully you can see that we need to translate the graph one on three units in the negative x direction which is what the C value is going to do. So we need C to equal negative one divided by three. And we also need a translation that's going to take the graph one on three units in the positive y direction. And D is responsible for that. So we need D to equal positive one third. So they are the answers for part C of this question. So from the examiner's report, we can see that only one quarter of students actually got the correct answer for this question with about 76% of students getting zero marks. So the question was well attempted, but it was certainly not well done according to the examiner's report. Some students had the incorrect sign for C and D, so it needed to be C equals negative one third, and that would translate the graph in the negative X direction, which is what was required, and D was positive a third, which would translate the graph one third of a unit in the positive Y direction. Other students misinterpreted the transformation matrix and attempted dilations rather than translations as specified by the question. We certainly took the longer route to answer this question by sketching those graphs, but it may have been helpful for some of you to look at those. And in an examination, you might need to look at reading those transformations directly from the rule rather than needing those graphs. But if the graphs help, then by all means, you can still do that.